Welcome to the CodeUp podcast. CodeUp is an international coding bootcamp for women and trans and non-gender conforming people. And we are headquartered in Barcelona, but we offer remote courses that can be done anywhere around the world to help people acquire skills to work in the tech space. I'm Anna, the host of the show. And in this episode, I talk with Olga, who's a current student in our 11-week full-time full-stack development bootcamp. She's currently in the sixth week, where they're transitioning from the lecture phase of the bootcamp into the project phase, where they start working on projects. She has done the entire bootcamp remotely, so we touch upon this experience. And the funny thing is that Olga has one of her closest friends that she also lives with that's also done the bootcamp in the class before her. So we will hear a couple references to that as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this conversation with Olga. So Olga, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. You're welcome. I'm also very glad to be here. Do you want to just quickly introduce yourself? My name is Olga and I come from Ukraine. Last more or less 10 years, I don't live in Ukraine. I lived in uh, Canada for a very short time, like six months, and then I moved to Latvia. Uh, And after Latvia, I moved to Spain. So you're doing our full-time, full-stack development bootcamp. And you're in which week at the moment? Uh, It's sixth week, the personal project. Okay, so you're in the sixth week. Amazing. So I just wanted to ask you, what were you doing before the bootcamp? Well, actually, I worked in IT. So... The area is very familiar to me, but I, I always wanted to learn programming and I had started several times and I found it very difficult, even though I was surrounded by developers all the time. So I'm very happy that finally I could dedicate a lot of time to that. And I think that it's, it's getting better and better. <laughs> so what's your background? What did you study and how did you end up going into IT? Well, I studied engineering, like laser optics, which is not really, it's a weird type of engineering, (laughs) but like I always was interested in computers. So as soon as I could, I started to, I don't know, to work with the hardware on my own, with my own computer. And after that, I started support, technical support. Then I switched to system administration. And I had like 100 computers under my responsibility. (laughs) And after that, my last probably eight years were in quality assurance. What is quality assurance? Well, the old name for that is uh, testing. (laughs) So we test what developers create. Okay, interesting. Simply speaking, it's much more than that. We test also the processes around that and stuff. Yeah. So then how did you ultimately decide to actually learn to code and to join the bootcamp? Well, because in mo- many programs nowadays, uh, many applications are written in JavaScript. So even if you do the automation, you have to understand the front end how it works, like the elements, and in knowing the back, like it's not a back end, but it's for us, for QAs, it's like a back end a little bit, (laughs) helps a lot. So basically, if you know how the application is built, you have all the instruments to to test it, like in a better way. So that was one of the reasons uh, why I wanted to do the course. Is there another reason? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the second reason I wanted to create, uh, well, it's like my own project and I wanted to build it. And of course, I didn't know from where to start and stuff. So I thought that if, for example, if I do the course and I build my own project, that would be really cool. And if not, then I can still use this knowledge as my work. Tell me about this project. What is it? <laughs> that's a secret <laughs> but it's related to like it's an app for parents and kids I think it makes it would make uh, life of parents much easier 
Oh, cool. Interesting. And when you decided to learn to code and you were looking at coding boot camps, what made you choose CodeOp? So I already knew CodeOp and I did several presentations about quality assurance uh, for other groups. So it was like, okay, I know these people. <laughs> I know how they teach. And this is when I decided to, to do the course with CodeOp. And is there anything about CodeOp that you think is different or makes it stand out as a community and as a coding bootcamp? Yeah, actually, I, I was very surprised about several things. First, that even after you graduate, you can still get a lot of support on your personal projects. Then in interviews, like the community is really helpful. You get like a professional coaching to prepare for a job and the second one is how school adapted to to online courses and i can imagine i mean it was a lot of stress for so many people when we suddenly had to stay at home and in spain it was super strict in comparison with other countries for me it was very surprising how efficiently the course was organized to study from home yeah so this is actually something I wanted to ask you about because the course is 11 weeks and you're in the sixth week at the moment and you've done the entire six weeks remotely. So what has that remote experience been like? Well, there are always advantages of disadvantages. <laughs> the advantage is that you like during the break, you can do the laundry, you can, I don't know, do something that you need to do at home. So this saves a lot of time. Also the commute, you don't need to spend this time. But sometimes like it's a little bit easier when the teacher is here. You just come to the teacher with your laptop and that's it. But for me, um, like if I have to call the teacher and the teacher is busy, I just start to resolve problem problems on my own. So I Google and then it also is a benefit from the other side. Like you try to do the problem solving uh, on your own and it's it's a skill that you have to develop eventually <laughs> when you're a developer <laughs> so um, for me uh, as I said I was really surprised that it works so well I was always skeptical about online courses like really skeptical really skeptical and moreover as I work in I worked in IT I also worked remotely several times like one time for six months even and there are problems where you work remotely. Sometimes people don't respond or people cannot organize well. It depends on the company or on the school in our case, uh, partially, but also it depends on the person. So for me, how Kodop organized the remote course was like, I was super surprised. Like I changed totally my decision. I even remember telling my friend, oh, you know, Maybe online course is not so such a bad idea. I, I realized that it works very well. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So can you kind of walk me through what a day in the life of a remote course student is like? Just one example of a day. Well, this week is very different because we started our own project, but first five weeks, it was like you start at nine, uh, and you have a like a lo logical challenge, so it that it's not necessarily the programming challenge. Sometimes you know it's like those um, challenges for kids <laughs> that uh, develop a lot the logical thinking. It's for thirty minutes when we do that, and then after that we have I think it was a lecture. Uh, no, it was the review of the previous day's assessment. So we check how everybody has done the, the homework and if there were any problems and stuff. So if there were, we go through those problems and see the solution or help to find the solution. And then we have a lecture for more or less one hour, one hour and a half, depends. Like if we have a lot of questions, then the lecture would go with longer. <laughs> and then after the lecture, there is a, another homework and then the break and after the break we again review the homework and then we have a lecture and another homework it's a pretty full-on day yeah yeah i spend like the whole day on on this uh, sometimes even the break like you eat and you program <laughs> <laughs>
And um, can you tell me about your instructor? Who's your instructor and how, how do you find them? So we had two instructors. One instructor was Emefa. She's previously a code of student also, which is a big benefit because basically she knows how we feel when we are stuck and we don't understand anything. So she can predict our reactions. That's, that's, really, that's really good. So she did uh, uh, the course with us. Well, she taught the course uh, for us for first uh, four weeks, I think, and then, or three weeks. And then Germinal, he did not do the course with Kodop. <laughs> he is our like, uh, senior teacher, and uh, he started to teach us like more complex topics. So for me i think it's a really nice setup because the basic things we teach from when we don't know anything well i know but many people in the group don't know anything about coding and stuff so it's very good that somebody who who was in the, their shoes very recently not very but quite recently can explain it in their language you know uh, and then Germinal explains some very difficult topics. So I think our teachers are really helpful. So when you don't understand something uh, at your homework and stuff, so you can just call them or ask them and they give you support uh, in the chat or in Zoom. Yeah, Germinal has, I think, more than 10 years of coding experience. So yeah. he's, quite, he's quite the wizard. So other than the classes, you guys also have events that happen sometimes on Friday yes. or some other more community events. Can you tell me about the events? Have you found them interesting? Yes, I'm a big fan of events. <laughs> so I attend almost all of them. Sometimes you don't know if the event is interesting or not, so you just join. And uh, like there was one time it was an event about data science. I am not a data scientist and I doubt that I will be at some point, but uh, it's an interesting topic and uh, it can be related to my future work. So I thought like, okay, I will just listen and do my work, homework. And then I'm like, wow, that's interesting. I'm not going to do my homework now because I want to concentrate fully on the event. So I like events because if you are not in tech, they help you to integrate better. Like. You start to understand that apart from programming, there are other parts of, of uh, development because data is also part of development. So there, there were also other events, more like a psychology of uh, joining a new company or uh, interviews with HR and uh, stuff like that. So I think it's really helpful to attend, attend those events. And how about the career coaching? You guys also get some career support. How have you found that? Yeah, so as I am in tech for a long time, <laughs> this is not super important for me because I also had to conduct interviews at my previous job, so I know both parts. <laughs> but this, this was one of the things that I found really interesting that Codop offers this. And I think it is super helpful uh, because also one of the uh, girls who did the previous course lives with me. <laughs> so I can hear her preparing for interview, having the calls uh, with HRs and like uh, test interviews and stuff. So I find it super, super useful. And I think this is like, without this, without career coaching, I think it would be much harder to to find job it's it maybe it's like 40 percent of success yeah so one 60 you, you've done the course and then 40 you prepare for the interview because while you prepare you also have to learn some topics or review some things which usually people even don't know how to do that or they don't know where they want to be in the back end or front end so for me this is this is a really really important part of the course what about your fellow classmates? What kind of backgrounds do they come from? And were you surprised to meet the kind of people that were gonna be part of your cohort? I was not surprised because as I have mentioned, I have seen uh, previous groups when I did the um, presentation about testing. 
but I think the group is really nice and we have girls from different backgrounds, from different countries. And it's very interesting because we also are all different ages. So it's very interesting to see how different generations perceive programming or technical knowledge. And for some people it's easier, for some it's more difficult. And like we, we sometimes we meet on Zoom to help each other because somebody doesn't understand or most of us don't understand. <laughs> so I think the group is very interesting. And before you started the boot camp, were you at all scared to learn to code or to start the boot camp? Did you have any fear? No, I think at this point, no, because I, I was like, okay, I spent so much time trying to learn programming and it's like, either I take it or I leave it. <laughs> so for me, it was a decision that I was like, okay, I, I just do it. I don't think about the future, about if it works or not. I just do it. So I was not, I was not scared. I would say I was happy even. <laughs> And in these first six weeks, have there been any particular memorable moments or highlights, eureka moments, anything that really stands out? There were several interesting moments. One moment was funny because I always use the boards, like a whiteboard, to write something or if I don't understand to solve the problem or to write some structure. It helps me a lot. And every time when we talk about our homework, something is not clear and it's like, okay, I just write it on the whiteboard. I just write it on the whiteboard. So in one week, like everybody had a whiteboard. <laughs> and it's really helpful. Like some, this is a very simple thing. You can write it on the paper, but it's not exactly the same I, for some reason, I don't know. <laughs> so it's very funny that everybody had a whiteboard. And there was also another funny thing. Well, not funny, but it's, it was really, I think I got even a little bit emotional. One of the girls from Kenya, first four weeks were fine for her computer. So because we did not run a lot of additional programs and server and, and uh, client. So when we started to use additional programs, her computer started to hang. She would drop out of the call. So we started to, to try to understand what was happening with her computer. Like, you should clean it, blah, blah, blah. It didn't help. And then we checked the specification. It turned out she had uh, very, very little RAM memory. And this was the reason why the computer was hanging all the time. So girls just sent the money to buy a new memory. And uh, like... Uh, everybody helped what they with what they could so we controlled like the guy who was putting the memory in he did not put the correct memory so like okay we wanted eight and you put four and blah, blah, blah. so at the end now it's working well and we're very happy and i was i was really surprised and i have like a really warm feeling when i when I see these kind of things. And in, in this case, it was really, really nice. That's incredible. That solidarity is so noteworthy. Very, very touching. So we've covered a lot of your experience through the bootcamp. And I just wanted to ask you if you have any final kind of words for someone that's thinking about learning to code, but is still kind of hesitant. Do you have anything to say to that kind of person? well just go for it i mean n now we are in the situation where we have a lot of time we sit at home and i think this is the time when we have to make decisions not just you know rest well resting is good but when it's too much it's not so good anymore so the industry is really I think it's one of the most stable industries and even if you don't have experience in IT or because IT is not only the programming there is also a business part if you are in banking or I don't know it can be related to restaurants insurance anything this is not if you have a different experience in uh, not in IT then you can use it reuse it in programming I think this is uh, something that stops everybody, but it should not. 
Awesome, Olga, thank you so much for your time and your story and telling me everything about your experience with the boot camp. And thank you. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find out more about CodeOp and the programs we offer, visit us on our website, codeop.tech, or any of our social channels. And if you want to get in touch, give us a call, message us, or send us an email at info at codeop.tech.